It is our eight year anniversary today, Woo January 21st. Oh, look at that. I know, it's pretty. pretty. We're gonna go out to a place called Seasons 52. Since it's our eighth anniversary, we are going to share eight lessons that we have learned in our eight years of marriage. Eight of about a million, but yeah, <laughs> we'll do eight. Stick around. All right. We have learned that we have drastically different Christmas tastes. <laughs> Stephanie's decorating style is not my decorating style. And when we first got married, I cared a lot about it. Now <laughs> I care way less about it. She likes, I don't know, she likes really gaudy Christmas oh, stuff. Oh my gosh. I don't like gaudy Christmas things. I like bright and colorful. You think Glittery. like, yeah, glitter, all the glitter. Clint likes Cracker Barrel throwing up in our house. It's a little much, but I do like like a flannel, wool, warm <laughs> sweater type texture to it and it's southern yes it's southern <laughs> but joanna Gaines, look at all her stuff you can't argue with joe so we've learned that we've had to mesh our christmas and basically all we have now is a christmas tree yeah the christmas tree and a bunch of disney ornaments yeah which we're cool with yeah so that's how we have figured out that problem solved it check number two you always should speak highly of your spouse when you're with other people always i never speak negatively about clint to anybody even one-on-one -on -one. like i don't vent about clint to other people because i want people to see the best in clint so i'm quick to speak highly of him i always try to speak highly of him with other people i don't want something that i think in the heat of the moment to skew somebody's view of who he really is Appreciate you're welcome <laughs> So number three is be best friends. Being best friends and having fun together is so valuable. I know for me specifically, I love it when she does something that I would want to do with a guy friends. When I am watching a Titans game or a new game and she'll step and be in the room with me at least, <laughs> I, I like that because for one, it shows that she's putting forth effort spend time but, with you yeah but also we're we're sharing in something on a deeper level than i could ever share with a like one of my friends yeah relax and have fun i'm trying to get her to go axe throwing with me at in fort lauderdale <sighs> If you are um, familiar with Enneagram stuff, Clint's a seven. He is spontaneous and always go, go, going on to the next thing. Like, let's go do this. I'm a six. I question everything. everything. I am a little bit afraid of everything and I like plans. So when Clint sprung it on me, it actually caused a fight because I was adamantly like, I will not go. He wanted to go that night. Like, hey, let's find a babysitter and go to Fort Lauderdale. That's an hour and a half away. Anyways, maybe I should have been spontaneous and done it, but we should also plan. You know, there's a, there's a middle ground. Lesson number four. Shut up. Spontaneity is always a great thing. <laughs> That's true. That is true. That might not be the official number four, but stick that in with the best friend thing. That's an honorable mention. Be least. be spontaneous together. Speaking of which, what can we do tonight? What spontaneous can we do tonight? Oh, we'll figure out something. So we just sat down a couple minutes ago and uh, they gave us a little card for our anniversary. It Happy was pretty nice touch. And we got, what do we get for an we appetizer? We got lump crab and shrimp stuffed mushrooms. This is why I like Florida. I won't ever get tired of eating on the water. It's always fun, always fun. Fourth thing we've learned is childbirth is insane. <laughs> All three of our children have had a crazy different story with childbirth all very unique all of them very exciting in their own way but man no one prepares you for that at all but it was it, it was crazy for all three of them and now we're done so i think we've yes. we've covered all of our yes. bases there yes literally i've done everything that you can do with childbirth. If you had a C-section, then I was induced with an epidural and I went into labor on my own and delivered med-free. So we've done it all. All check, 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 check. I can't do it again. 
so that's why we're done. But it's crazy, and that's we have experienced it together, and it's I couldn't have done it without Clint. So no, like literally, <laughs> couldn't have done it without me. Yeah. Look at this right here. That's pretty good. Ooh, yeah. You're not. I'm a little. Okay, let me get a plate. So I'm just gonna try it. I don't like mushrooms, but I know Clint does. Sacrifice. Sacrifice for your husband. It's good. Great. The chewiness of the shrimp kind of balances out the chewiness of the mushrooms and makes them not so mushroomy. So I approve. It's good. Post appetizer pre entree, we'll do number five. Speaking of childbirth and number four, you have to continue working at marriage after kids. It doesn't come naturally, and that was something that we didn't realize. I think it surprised both of us how much effort we have to put in now that we have kids to intentionally reconnect and not just about parenting. Like, yeah, you do want to be on the same page, but just as individuals because the kids, you know, give 18 more years. Theoretically, the kids will be out of the house, but we're still going to be there. And I want there to be a relationship there. So we have to keep working at it. For us, I think it means dates. I think we go on dates pretty regularly. We've gotten a lot better after Lucy. Just try to connect after the kids go to bed, just to talk about important things and just about life. It's hard specifically with, well, we don't have older kids, so yeah. take this with a grain of salt. I have no idea what it's like to have teenagers or anything, but it seems like it's a little harder when you first have kids and when you have young kids because you're figuring it out and you have less control in your house. Well, it's such a physical thing too. We are physically meeting so many needs right now that it's physically exhausting. I've heard the older they get, the more emotionally exhausting they get. So parenting is never easy. By the end of the day, I want to just check out and be done. After the kids go to bed, I want to go night. And some nights I do. I'm not perfect. But you have to intentionally take the time to reconnect. All right, here's dinner. We got the same thing. Filet with some mash. Some mash and some mushrooms and a tomato and some callalini. They said it was a mix between cauliflower and broccoli. I don't know. I'll take it. We are heading to get a smoothie because we're being good and having a smoothie for dessert. So dinner was awesome, it was really good. I'm not sure how I felt about the callalini. Is that how you said it? I have no idea. It basically tasted like broccoli with like white tips. So it wasn't my favorite, but the filet was really Ooh. great. And the mash was good. A little Whole30 tip, if you wanna go get smoothies at a place like Tropical Smoothie, they put sugar in all of their smoothies. Specify that you don't want any sugar and add an extra banana and it tastes just as sweet. Yep, very good. It's delicious. Number six, we have learned that marriage is a lot less wife following the husband in whatever he decides to do and a lot more of husband and wife walking side by side and doing it together. We grew up thinking kind of that the man leads the family and the woman is there and takes care of the house and the home and, and her family while the husband leads it. And this isn't something that we've learned from necessarily a mistake, just more we've learned doing life together, that it's much more of a together kind of thing. We've always been able to come together and make decisions together and then do it together. So it's a lot more about we instead of of he or me. Spontaneous adventure. We did it. We're being spontaneous. Stephanie is being spontaneous. This is this is still vanilla for me, but <laughs> it's a good compromise. We're going to the beach. The moon is out, which I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, look at that. And uh, just get to walk a little bit and and hang out. We got a little time. Hopefully you can hear this. Oh, we're on seven. Yes. Seven. We learned like you just got to invite people into your life and your home. That's been some of our best memories and our greatest joys is have people in our home and we just have them.
sex and women that you should be each other's best friend. We already said that, but you should also have other best friends. True, true. Number eight, we've learned how to support each other and how to be what the other person needs us to be in any given moment. Eight years is a lot of life and we've done a lot of ups together and we've done a fair amount of downs together and I think that we've just learned about each other and really figured out how to give tough love when tough love is needed and how to just listen and be there when that's what's needed. I know for me, after every baby, the hormones are insane and for a few months of the adjustment period, uh, I'm not always the most rational person in the world and, and Clint learned to be graceful, helpful, and very forgiving whenever uh, we were going through that, but I'm thankful that he was able to learn that and support me through it because if he had been as abrasive as I was back to me, I, it would have crushed me. So I am thankful that he was gentle when I, I did not have a gentle spirit. We are home. I'm so tired. Our smoothie ended up having sugar in it after all. So we didn't get to finish it. We watched the lady put sugar in it for like the third time and she had already remade it. Didn't have the heart to tell her that it wasn't right again. So we put them in popsicle things and gonna give them to the kids. So no dessert tonight, we did pretty no, good. No, I drank a little bit of it and now I'm crashing. That's why I feel so extra tired. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you're married, maybe you uh, can tell us something that you've learned down in the comments. What's the Please. biggest lesson? Yeah, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned in your marriage? Um, and if you're not married, then hopefully you can glean a little bit of wisdom from this and uh, learn from our mistakes so that you go into your marriage knowing mm -hmm. some of the things that we're just learning. And make sure you subscribe. Like I said in the last video, we're going to have a lot of Disney Cruise stuff coming up. It's happening. Oh, so soon. Uh, I'm going to start packing. The kids are already packed, so I'm going to be sharing how we did that. And then I've got to pack for myself and all of the little extras. So we'll have all of that stuff coming up. So subscribe so that you get notified whenever we do that. And I think that's it. That's it. See ya. Bye.